at night in some countries for those of you that are viewing me uh, via social media that would be uh, my five Facebook pages that would be my YouTube page that would be my Twitter page where you can get me live for those of you who are even more high-tech with your smartphones the Android as well as the uh, uh, iPhone platforms if you don't have me downloaded already you can go into your either your iPhone App Store or your Play Store on your Androids and download Kevin LA Ewing Ministries where you can watch me live no matter where you are in the world again it is a pleasure it is a privilege to be in your company once again I thank God for another Saturday it's a rather warm Saturday here in the sunny island of Grand Bahama look like we're gonna have some showers in a little bit but nevertheless I just trust that you guys are enjoying your your day-to-day -day. and I don't know if you're like me but I couldn't wait to get here in the studio to continue with this powerful and provocative uh, teaching that we began last week, Prophets and Prophets of Baal. <laughs> I've met a lot of people this week who, uh, <laughs> who found it to be uh, humorous last week when we was talking about the different tactics and so on that these prophets and prophets are coming up with now in terms of, you know, Jesus, miracle oil, and Jesus juice and all this stuff. And I met a lady <laughs> she was so funny. She said, now, nah, man, student, you really got to do better now. Come on, the Jesus chicken, please. <laughs> I said, watch and see. Don't take my word. Not just Jesus chicken. They can come up with Jesus spicy, cursy chicken. So you watch and see. You mark my words, okay? They are shameless, slow bellies. They have no shame. Anything to make a dollar, they will do. And I come to shut them down. So church scared to do it, but I can do it. All right, I ain't got no commitment to them. My commitment is to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't have to hide nowhere. I don't have to be politically correct. I don't have to mince no words. It is what it is because that's what the Bible says. It's not my opinion, neither how I feel. For those of you who uh, follow me yesterday, I did a very, very powerful teaching uh, called The Prudent, P-R-U-D-E-N-T. Uh, for those of you that missed it, I uh, encourage you to go on any one of my social media sites and you could uh, watch it. And also, I have to make this disclaimer again, the scammers are out and they're hot on my trail. Uh, I had to delete these demonic comments that they're putting under my YouTube pages. They're coming in as so-called prophet and prophetess with uh, my profile pictures pretending to be me with my name. But of course, you guys know this is not me. So I, as soon as you contact me, I have them uh, uh, blocked, deleted, and I removed the comments, all right? They've gotten so desperate that they now begin to attack my Facebook pages. So they are creating these fake profiles, pretending to be me sending you friend requests. I don't send friend requests. In fact, my uh, Facebook personal page is exhausted with the 5,000 that you are allowed to have as a limit as a personal page. However, I have over 30,000 followers on that personal page. And of course, I have the Kevin L. Ewing prayer page, ministry page, the blog page, and the Words of Wisdom group. All of these uh, pages right now that I'm literally streaming to live. So any requests coming from me is nonsense. Tell those people, go go, go get safe and stop trying to, to, to be robbers and underbellies. All right? Now, I want to get right into it today because I have a tremendous amount of information to give you something that is we're going to really pull the lid off of it today but before i do that i made a promise last week that i intend to keep until we bring this awesome young man on the show which i plan to do a two hour sit with him so he could explain this book to you his name is mr andrew k coakley bahamian i like that <coughs> andrew k coakley and he wrote this awesome book called Noise, N-O-I-S-E. I'm going to put it here in my camera so that for those of you who, who I encourage, please, you must get a copy of this. Uh, I have placed the link of this book on my social media pages. I have also placed the, a link under the teaching last week on YouTube, uh, part two of what we're we'll doing today, Prophets and Prophets of Baal. Uh, it's pinned at the very top of the comment section. This book can be found on Amazon.com. When I'm done with this teaching, I will post the link again 
on my YouTube channel under this particular teaching that we're about to get into now. And it's called Noise by Andrew K. Coakley. I told you as I was reading this book, it is same as if me and him had conversations before. I want to read a small segment of the book. I really want to encourage you guys to get it, all right? And this is page 40. And here's what he says. He says, the gospel has now become a feel-good message. And the church has become a place where people go to have a preacher stroke their spiritual head and not ruffle feathers. So preachers tell congregants what they want to hear instead of what the Bible says. But that sounds like you, Kevin. It's not like you be preaching that same thing. Someone has said that there is not much preaching about hell anymore in many churches. Some churches dare not call people sinners, choosing instead to call those that are unsafe, listen what they are called now, the ones who have yet to find their way. There are certain words that cannot be spoken in some churches simply because it is politically incorrect to do so. They claim it is discrimination. Instead, all of today's teaching and preaching is about prosperity, loving oneself, positive thinking, and positive confession, claiming what is yours in Christ, walking in one's Christian inheritance. Some teach that people are not responsible for their sins, but are instead victims of a nature over which they have no control. Their sins are referred to as habits and addictions that can only be corrected with psychological modified behavior. I'll end right there. Listen, you must get a copy of this book. The author is Mr. Andrew K. Coakley. Andrew K. Coakley. A-N-D-R-E-W-K-C-O-K-L-E-Y. The book is called Noise. He's literally hitting, I mean, this thing right on the head. And I just want to read small excerpts of it from now until I bring him on the show because I'm encouraging you guys. I have it in the camera right now. I'm encouraging you guys to get a copy of this book. It is a powerful book. It is a, it is a, a, a mind-challenging book. What it's going to do for you uh, is really make you step outside of church and take another look at what you're calling or what the house of God has been converted to. And that's why I relate so much to it because everything that he's saying in here, I believe, and this is what I've been ministering and teaching and preaching for the many years that I've been doing this. The church, and, and again, I put my disclaimer out there, not all churches are this way, but a vast and a majority of them, the ones that are not this way is in a small, small percentage. I will go as far as saying 10 to 20% of those that do not do these things because it has become the way of, of the way that they do things now. So I encourage you to get a copy uh, of that book, all right? And I want to get straight into today's teaching because, like I say, I have a lot to cover. And today I'm going to do uh, brain surgery, okay? So I'm going deep today. I'm going to do delicate surgery. Today I'm going to be a spiritual neurosurgeon, all right? Because it is imperative that you get the understanding of what we're dealing with and what you're up against. So many people are blinded by what has become culture and tradition and they truly believe it is of God but what I'm about to release to you are the details of what you don't know or what is pulling the strings behind the so-called prophetess and prophet I mean it's almost like a a cult now where people are just on a Jones they are addicted as to me this so-called prophet prophetess prophetic ministry all this other stuff the the what's going on now. To me, if I had to make a comparison, what we see in now is compared to what drugs was like in the 80s. And I mean that. It's like the whole thing is to take you away from the Bible, take you away from God, word. And we're gonna come in and every two seconds we got a word from God and God say do this and go. And the more we analytically process the quality of these so-called prophecies, it becomes so apparent how much we are walking away from God, how much we are going in a direction that is totally opposite to what God has called us into. We have been trained to revere and to give all of our monies and give all of our cars and homes and material possession to these vultures, to these money hogs. That's what we are trained to do. And when we don't do it, 
they now take it to the next level. They can actually curse you now. They could stop your finances and shut down your business through a, a spiritual declaration. See, and one will be fearful of these, these people because they're ignorant to the word of God. And that is where Kevin comes in. Kevin is coming in to show you the scriptural protocols, the scriptural laws, rules, and principles that you need to be focused on. Not these people, these robbers who will pay for it if they don't repent one day. When everything, and just like uh, Mr. Coakley, Andrew Coakley said in this book that I just read, it's like the whole Christianity is all about self, all about prosperity and the prophetic. Again, let me put my disclaimers out there. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with the prophetic. The prophetic is included in scriptures. The prophetic is declaring what God has already done in the future and declaring it now. The prophetic, dream interpretation, speaking in tongues, the gift of discernment, the gift of healing, miracles, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. These things are in operation today. I'm not discounting these things. I'm discounting these money hungry vultures who hide behind these things, okay? The Bible described them as wolves attired in sheep clothing, but he didn't just say wolves. He used this adjective that is so uh, profound. He called them ravenous wolves, meaning that the sole purpose of them coming behind you is not just so much to take you off course, from what God is all about, but they coming after your wallet, they coming after your, your pocket. If I lie, tell me if I'm lying. You, you cannot go to a conference today or a two night powerful revival where you're gonna see healing and miracles and the, the blind seeing and the deaf hearing. You, you never hear after those services, nobody who was blind could see. The people who went there in wheelchair come back out in the wheelchair, none of that. But I can tell you one miracle would take place you went in there with a couple of dollars and you come out with none. So until somebody speak on this, like me, and they can't stop me, I will expose these crooks for every time. It is so terrible and disgraceful that one got a fear going to church now because he or she scared they can get shaked down to the door. This is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. And I just can't see how a Christian consul, I can't see how a pastor or a bishop or whoever sit back and you could, could make noise about the government. You could talk about everybody else, but you could never expose these vultures. It's hypocritical. And if you treasure the sanctity of what Jesus Christ did on that cross, you should be standing up and fighting for that. But no, everybody jumps on board now and you got to sow a seed. Every, everything is seed. It, it is so sickening, I'm telling you. I need some pepto bismol. That's what I need. That's how sickening it is right now. I need some kind of eno or something because it's just filth in my, in my view. And people sit back and absorb it. Oh, don't touch the woman of God. Watch out now. Okay, so what of 500 of the prophecies she gave never came to pass? Let God deal with her. You can't judge her. That ain't what my Bible telling me. That's not what my Bible is telling me. And this is what we're about to, to prance on. So let me do a quick survey or review, sorry, of what we did last week. And I'm going to spend about five minutes on this, and I'm going to jump into today's teaching, which is a Prophet and Prophetess of Baal, part two. Last week, I immediately went into some definitions, and these definitions were vital for you to hear and to understand because it is the core of how these money-hungry vultures, that's my definition of them, rob you and rape you financially. And I talk about familiar spirit. I spoke about it. I, de I defined that to you. I'm not going to go into detail with that. Please go back to my video part one of this teaching, and that will give you the breakdown. I also spoke about divination. I said to you, I'm referring to them as prophets of Baal, which is because that is the God that is sponsoring or that is supporting them. That is the God that is giving them these so-called prophetic words to give to you, but it has nothing to do with God. I went into Matthew 7, verse 15, where Jesus made this powerful declaration when he says to beware of these false prophets who are going to come to you as wolves, really, but they are shrouded or clothed in sheep clothing, right? And he called them ravenous wolves because the point he's trying to express here and to put an emphasis on is that you, you can know them. You, you, how are you going to know them? Everything is going to be about money, seed. That's... 
The new term is seed, 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 seed. You don't go hear but salvation. You don't go hear but hellfire. You don't go hear but live right, righteous life. No. And if you do hear about that, it's going to come with an invoice at the end of it. You got to give a seed again. You got to get fed up. How could you not be sick of this? You know how many people I sit with who don't go to church and don't plan to go to church no more? They want to stay home and watch some YouTube channel and listen to somebody preach the word of God where they could finally not hear someone put an invoice at them as soon as this person declare or decree a word from the Lord. Well, you all need to stop. I wish the government could put in laws to lock these people up. Wicked man. So we talked about uh, these vultures and Jesus made a statement that we're going to talk about also in the 20th verse of Matthew 7. And he also made it in verse 16 of Matthew 7 after he described who these vultures are, how they're coming attired, and what their main purpose is, which is seed. That's why he called them ravenous wolves. And a reven revening wolf means to rob or to secretly loot, to bring to ruin, to grab, to take by either force, to confiscate, by intimidation. God is going to curse you. If you don't come up right here now and sow a seed, your business ain't going to flow. That's devil talk. And, I, and to me, I'm just so in awe that no preacher speaks about this. How you? Well, you can if you're doing it, eh? If you're doing it too. When could we come to the house of God? You know how many people coming into these places who are broken? People who are on the edge of ending their life. People who just feel like killing them and their children because they can't take care of their children. They can't feed them. You know how many men out there fighting all kinds of mental issues? All of these things happening. So he said, finally, let me go to God's house. Maybe the preacher God can use him today or her today and speak a word so that could change my view on life right now. Only for no matter how much depression you're going through, you better, if you want that depression, go, you better come up off that seat. But I can never, I promise Jesus Christ, as long as I have air in my breath to preach the gospel, I will expose these crooks for every time everything jesus you have a revival somewhere you gotta buy a cloth you gotta pay for oil you gotta pay for water and now you attach a miracle to it when are we going to trust in the bible when are we going to trust in the word of god when is that word going to become our confidence bunch of crooks anyway the scripture that i loved most of last week was lamentations 2 verse 14 right and it's a very, very profound scripture. In fact, I'm going to turn there right now before I go into part two of this because I'm showing you what these people are doing to you. They are destroying your life with the pack of lies that are leaving their lips that they are labeling as the word of God. And anybody who's offended of what I'm saying, it is you that I'm speaking to. Because if you are a, a, a child of righteousness and you study and believe this word, you would agree with everything what I'm saying because what I'm saying is coming from the scriptures. That's where it's coming from. But you letting this clown on the pulpit telling you nonsense that if you want your leg healed, if you want your children come off drugs, come sow a seed. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, bunch of crooks. Anyway, Lamentations chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 14. And this is a scripture that stood out to me as it relates to these, these financial rapists, right? Uh, Lamentations 2, verse 14 says, Thy prophets have seen vain, foolish things. Remember, I expand on that last week. I see God giving you a promotion. I see God giving you a new car. I don't know, but I see God. I see you getting married. I, see, I don't know. I see, I see, oh God, I'm so tired of this. I see papers being signed. Papers being signed. The enemies you see the day you will see no more. The Egyptians, I mean, you know what? Why don't you all do a record and sell it? Because this is the same nonsense you hear every day. But the Bible is telling us here in Lamentations 2 verse 14, it says, Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered your iniquity. When are they going to say, yes, I do see these things, but I also see where you have unconfessed sin in your life. I also see where you are violating the laws of God. You are in breach of the commandments. He said, but they're not telling you these things. As a result of that, listen what the scripture says. He says here, and they have not discovered thine iniquity, listen, to turn away your captivity. So the scripture is saying, this so-called prophet or prophetess 
who is coming here to declare the word of God for your life, is telling you a bunch of vain and frivolous stuff. Never telling you about the, the, the staunch unforgiveness you have in, in your heart for your mother who already dead. But you refuse to give up. But yet he or she sees, I see you can get a promotion. And I see God turning things around and that thing is bothering you for 600 years. He's going to move that thing on the side and the enemies on your job. You see today, you will see them no more. I see God say there's a good future for you. Yeah, God saying all of that. And the Bible says that while praying, I must forgive others so my heavenly father could forgive me. And I hell bent on this anger in my heart towards my mother. And you don't see that? You devil. So listen what the scripture says. Not only did he tell you a bunch of nonsense. And he says, and they have not discovered your iniquity. But this iniquity that they're not telling you about. He said, this is what currently have you in captivity. Read it. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 14. So these so-called vultures, these financial serial rapists, the Bible is clear about them. They, they're not going to make your life better. They're going to make your life worse. And just like Brother Coakley said, you, you now have to be politically correct. Certain things you can't say in church no more. Especially when it comes to conviction of sin. So no, so the thing that we can't do that now, then we, let's just preach them happy. And let's throw those little punch phrases so they can give us more of their money and tell them there's something special about a $1,000 seed. I mean, you give God that for some reason, he forget all the other ones who only gave a penny, $2, $5, and he runs straight to you and give a thousand. Which scripture can I say again? Money, vultures, slow belly devils. So the scripture is making it very clear. The only thing that these false prophets will do for you will compound your evil. I ended on Revelation 16, verse 13 to 14, and it only begins to show you the intensity as time goes on tense. Their deception is going to become just like now. And in that scripture, it says how the trinity of the kingdom of darkness, which was the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and how these uh, spirits that had the appearance of frogs were coming out of their mouths, they were able to. And I always reference you to Exodus chapter 7, beginning at verse 8, where uh, Pharaoh had his crew doing the exact same thing. The situation here is, though, what I was putting emphasis on is, where are they getting this prophetic or power from? How is it that they're able to make, do miracles just like the men and women of God? So this is really what this teaching is about, is to show you how to differentiate. And the only way that you can do that, you have to step back. You have to pull yourself out of the web that you're in, because as long as you're there, you're not going to see it. But once you step back and now, let me, rev let me revert to the scriptures that gives me the identifiers to expose these slow belly devils. And that's the, other than that, you, you probably somewhere in some, some church, you've been given seed for the past 10 years. Nothing is happening in your life. And you, and you, 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 you mind you, you would have uh, moments where you'd be like, boy, this ain't making no sense. Only for them to encourage you again. You know, some, you know, uh, you know, Abraham, glory be to God. When God came to him, it took 25 years before this happened, you know. So you can't put a timeline and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. But it's ironic, though, that I can't put a timeline on it. But you could. Preacher. Liar. And how is that? God said, come, come, come right now with the $500. Come, 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 come with the $1,000. You could put a timeline on it, but I can't. But I don't know why people could fall for this. Anyway. Today we can get into part two of this teaching, and it's going to be very thought-provoking, right? And I know when you hear me sometimes, you could hear the frustration and the anger, and it is there in me because my desire is to free the people of God from these Babylonian captors, right? And that's what they are. These people are nothing of God. They display nothing of God. And it is sad that they would use God and his works to bamboozle and to deceive people. But I'm going to take you into a series of scriptures that's going to reveal to you. This is, don't forget me. Forget how you feel about me. Look at the scriptures. And if you still don't believe after the scriptures, then you're an idolater because you idolize these your Babylonian captors 
more than you believe the word of the living God. Very, very simple, okay? So, the first scripture that I want us to go into is Deuteronomy 18, and we're going to read from verse 18 to verse 21, all right? Remember, our topic again is prophet and prophetess of Baal, all right? And the subtopic today is who is behind their power? Who is behind their prophecies? Who is behind their so-called miracles? All right? So, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And we're going to see some instructions from the Lord because that's what I used to listen to. No preacher, I don't care what they call themselves, they could never convince Kevin Ewing to go against God's word. Once I didn't read that, you talk in Dutch to me if you come in with something different. So get out of my face. Deuteronomy 18, and let's read from verse 18 to verse 21. Listen, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in their mouth. And he, which is the prophet, shall speak unto them, which are my people, all that I shall command him. So right off the bat, God is saying, you don't add nothing to this. You don't take nothing from what I'm giving you to declare. I will raise you up. Now, me raising you up does not mean that you don't have the ability to realign yourself with something else. The gift is still on you. The prophetic is still on you. And it's still up to you to be used by God and for his glory and for what he has called you to do. Or you could take those same gifts and work for the kingdom of darkness. So God is making the rules clear from the get-go in verse 18 of Deuteronomy 18, right? Now listen to verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken or listen unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So God is saying here, once I use you, prophet, whoever, to declare a word to a people, a group, a city, a president, whoever. Now, if they choose not to listen, well, they would have to answer to me. And so much words, sir, ma'am, prophet, prophetess, you don't have the right to say, well, if you don't going to listen, I curse you in the name of the Lord. You, you, don't, you have no, the scripture gives no room for you to do that. God say they will have to answer to me if they choose not to respond to the prophecy I'm using you to convey. Listen to verse 20. Very important. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name, listen carefully, of other gods, small g, even that prophet shall die. Now, the reason why I want us to put emphasis on that latter statement is because the scriptures are making very clear that prophecies are not only limited to the, from the kingdom of God. He's basically saying here that a so-called prophet could be hearing a voice, could be hearing a spiritual command or declaration, but it does not necessarily mean it's coming from the kingdom of God. Because he's saying here in verse 20, the latter part of verse 20, he says, verse 20 says, But the prophet which shall presume or assume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. So they're making declaration. God says he's going to do this for you. And I hear God says do this and do this and do that and do this. Now, if you are a prophetic junkie, meaning you're not interested in the word of God, you want into no praise and worship, you want into none of that, I come here to get a word from God. That's it. Then you are the ideal candidate to be fooled by these slow belly vultures. You are the people that they're looking for because you're not going to size it up with scriptural text. You're not going to, like the Bereans did, make sure that this is, you won't do none of that. So the scripture is saying here, they have the capacity to speak, claiming to speak as an oracle of the God of Abraham. But the reality is, they're speaking as a voice of another God. The Bible says when they do this, let me tell you something. These so-called prophets and prophets today who are making these declarations and when it don't come to pass, they try to come up with some lie. You, you hear what the Lord does, right? 
that when their prophecy don't come to pass and they claim that it was from God, the rule was we must kill them. This this what the Old Testament laws were. So listen to verse 21. And, it, and, and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord had spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord had not spoken, but the prophet had spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Don't, so what is the scripture saying? The same, the opposite of what these clowns are saying today. What are they saying? Oh, now I hear him say that uh, 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 Donald Trump was going to win. I hear that. Now, even though it didn't come to pass, don't, don't touch the man of God. Don't touch the prophetess. That's God's anointed. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I'm reading here. Let me read what the scripture is saying. Verse 22 of Deuteronomy 18 for the biblically illiterate. All right? When a prophet speak it in the name of the Lord, if the thing followed not, you said Trump was going to win, he didn't win. If the thing followed not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord had not spoken, but the prophet had spoken it presumptuously or off of his own will. The Bible is clear. Thou shall not be afraid of him. Don't touch God's anointed. You declaring something God didn't say. Don't touch God's anointed. But somebody else in here, because somebody else anointed it, because it can't be you. See, let me tell you something. The days of trying to put fear in those who are biblically inclined are over, all right? And people need to get into the word of God and read what the scriptures say. And any pastor, preacher, prophet, prophetess, or church that have their members in fear, because their false prophecies are not coming to pass and so on, whatever the case may be. Boy, look here. You, you have no right. You have no right to hold nobody captive. Go get saved. That's what you need to do. Telling lies and the lies are coming to pass. Now you're mad with the people because your false gods put a player number on you. you. Try that. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 5. All right? What does it say? If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass. Listen carefully now. Listen carefully. The prophetic word or they say God showed them a dream or whatever. The prophetic word of the dream actually came to pass. Listen carefully what the scripture says. Let can start again. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder came to pass. Whereof he spoke unto thee. Saying L listen. Let us go after other gods. So he's saying. I'm teaching you people. How to be observant. Yes what he said come to pass. Who he told me. He told me that I was going to get a new car. But I wouldn't have had to pay for it. Somebody was going to bless me. Okay that's fine. He told me he had a dream about me. And he saw me working job wearing a nice business outfit and it came to pass oh my god this is the man of god he said no 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 the test ain't finished yet he said after giving you those prophecies that actually came to pass but now he's saying okay you see they come to pass so you know he's a man of god okay now let's go after another god now in today's terms he's not going to say that to you like that he isn't going to say now kevin you see i told you you was going to be on the radio and you see you on the radio right okay now, he isn't going to say, now, nah, let's go serve Baphomet. Let's go serve Baal. Let's go down by the beach and worship the conch shells. No, he ain't going to say that. So, Kevin, how is he going to address it in today's world? He's going to say, now, nah, if you want to keep those blessings flowing in your life, I have a red cloth here. You could purchase this for $1,500. And wherever you take this red cloth, the blessings are going to flow with you. And wherever you take this oil and any pain on your body or somebody got obey around your front door, when you stand up by the front door and you drink this thing right here or rub this Crisco oil on your face. You see, he will come out and say, these are the instructions or from the consultation from my altars. He can tell you that. So what do you do now not to make it obvious? Well, you push stuff on them like oils. You push stuff on them like uh, uh, Miracle uh, Kentucky uh, Spicy Chicken. All this garbage. 
So you see, the scripture is telling you, I'm trying to get you to look at the quality, yes, of the prophecy, but what am I being advised to do to sustain the so-called blessings that came to pass? Probably talking to somebody today. He says, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spoke unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Kevin, you see all this power I have? You want some of this, Kevin? You want to see more blessings come in your life? Well, Kevin, take this salt and now put it in the corner of your house. Kevin, mix this with ammonia and mop your floor with it. Kevin, get the Florida water. Kevin, get the type and time. Kevin, get the... What What? What? What do I have to do the scriptures? Now, Kevin, you know your neighbors, them wicked. You know the people on the job, they know good, they're working rich on you, right? Now, before you leave home, Kevin, Get some garlic and put it in your bag. Put it in your backpack. Mom, you got your wallet there? Put it. Put your garlic in there. What scripture could I find where Jesus advised those after he done healed them? Now, if you want Jesus healing, stay on you. Go get, plant one garlic tree in your yard or go down by the food store and make sure it's on you. None. So, Kevin, what point are you making? Just like the scripture said, even if their prophetic words come to pass... Don't be fooled by that. Watch what they say next. Let's go serve other gods. Let's go do the start of gods. And they can come up and tell you like that. They can say, now, now you need to buy this miracle pillow, okay? Or you need this uh, uh, Jesus, like I say, Jesus spicy chicken. And when you bite into this, no demon can come on you. But you see, because you're a prophetic junkie, you're not interested in what the Bible has to say. You don't want to hear people like Kevin. This man tell me something to come to pass. I believe him. I ain't running no cross-reference or check with this. So this is why a lot of people are enslaved to these people. Watch what the scripture goes on to say. Verse 3 says of Deuteronomy 13, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. So you hear what he's saying now? His prophetic word came to pass. But if he's saying, let's go go do something that is contrary to the word of God, the Bible is clear. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. But your people telling you, don't touch the man of God. Leave the woman of God alone. So they're telling you to go against what God is saying. They're building fear in you, anxiety in you. Oh, Lord, I saw that seed in prophetess life. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. That's why they hold up my bank. No, you accepted a curse. That's what you did. That had nothing to do with the God of Abraham. So he says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams, for the Lord your God proved you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. God says, I'm allowing this to happen to see whose side you on. Every two words, prophetess say, prophetess say this, prophetess say dream. What did God say? What is it in this word that are you are following? Child prophets say, put this, put when, when, when your enemy do this to you, get Psalms 91. Don't read it. Open it and put it under your pillow. And what that's supposed to do? The scripture is supposed to jump on you and heal you? Child prophets say, put these beads around your arm and, and the devil see it. He can run the next way. What scripture can I find this? Verse 4, sorry, verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proved you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 4, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. Not prophet, it's not prophet. And keep his commandments and listen and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave to him. Who is this him? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Verse 5 of Deuteronomy 13. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Now, you see, let me set up properly for this because I can't take this no more. Y'all, people just come at me. Kevin, you just be so rough on them, man. I rough? God said, kill him. And <laughs> you call him me. God, but why would God institute such a harsh punishment? Because they are ruining the destiny. That is no different than your decent child who you educated. And some person put them on drugs. 
And that child today with a bachelor's degree and never found their way because some selfish person who wanted to be rich give your child drugs and your child wandering, wandering the streets today. Can you imagine every time you see that drug dealer and you know it was him, you know that's who your child used to buy drugs from. Wouldn't you be infuriated? Wouldn't you be sad to you grinding to wake in the morning and your child walking the highway in their underwear unkept, eating out of the garbage? How would you feel? So this is how God feels. God is no different. God said, put that, put them, kill them. Because all they are are destiny destroyers. God called you to minister his word. God called you to send you all over the world to preach. And they got you nailed down, worshipping them in their devil kingdoms. You should be angry about that. We're the Christian counselors. This is the issues you need to be dealing with. You're watching people's lives being destroyed by spiritual drug dealers. And who are they? These fake prophet and prophetess. These casino rollers playing with people life but they could do it because the people are ignorant to the scriptures nobody's teaching them these things all you hear so is see it no man you got to be upset they are spiritual drug dealers they are giving you stuff that's going to destroy you and take you off your destiny Did you try that that's what I equate them to. They are no different from the drug dealers of the 80s and the 90s. They are no different from a Pablo Escobar. They are no different from whoever drug dealer you know. They are no different from them. Because what they are giving you, what they are feeding you, what they are teaching you is contrary to the word of God. And any bishop, an apostle, or whoever you call yourself, sit back and ponder these fools. You are no different from them. Now you deal with it. Come get me if you come. Come get me right now. Because at the end of the day, see, people don't feel it until it happened to them. You see, when when somebody else's child on drugs walk in the street, eating out the garbage, got dogs following them, unkept, you, you turn your head the next way. My God, where's family is? Jesus, come on, you don't think they come here and beat him, or take him and wash his hair? My Lord, you go about your business, you go, go get your breakfast, your coffee in the morning, and live your regular life. Right? Until it happened to you. Or you want the whole world go on pause now and come to help you address this matter, you hypocrite. No, man. And that's why I tell you the, ch the churches will be no better. You will have a congregation pack of people that are enslaved, never living in the liberty of Christ. Because you've allowed this financial serial rapist, okay, this spiritual drug dealer, to come in here and declare things from a God, small g, that has nothing to do with the God of Abraham. And that's what you buy it into. Well, you say I harsh? Well, let me see what the Bible say. Because I read early in Deuteronomy 18, put them to death, and I'm reading again here in Deuteronomy 18 verse 5, so shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. How are you going to do that? He said, kill him. Now, when I read it in years past, I used to be like, boy, God, that's kind of harsh. And, excuse me, I used to agree with people when they used to say, boy, you keep talking about your God is a loving God, but look, like he, you know, he's, when he get mad, he, he, he ain't going to spank you, he can kill you. And I used to be like, boy, <laughs> that's true now, until I see the gravi sort of gravity of it. And the best analogy I could have given you was that of a drug dealer and their victims. Your beautiful daughter who you adore, who you look forward, you, you cry on the day she graduated from preschool, you weep on the day she graduated from primary school, you weep see her when she graduated uh, high school and college, you saw the potentials and gifts, she played a piano, she's a good singer, she's a part of the church, she's now on a master's degree, and God hook up with somebody who said, here baby, test this, what you want me to do, just sniff it, and hook your daughter from that day. And your daughter all over the place, sleeping with people. Picked up HIV and other diseases on the way to satisfy her desire for this evil drug. It is no different from a false prophet and a false prophetess who is constantly begging you for seed and then making up all kind of nursery rhymes and foolishness to say this is what God's saying why you should give it. It is no different. 
because you're taking the poison off of their destiny. And they should have been preaching the word of God. They should have been having souls under their belt that they would have won for Christ. But they couldn't do it because their commitment is to the prophetess or the fake prophet instead of Almighty God. I just pray that they don't come. They have to come to you personally to develop the righteous indignation that I have right now. I hope it don't come to that. I hope you could just see it for what it is and attack it the way that I do. But to sit back and criticize, well, you go ahead. I just pray to God that don't visit your door. I just pray to God that the day don't come where your son or your daughter is running behind another God. And then you find your way to Kevin. Oh, Kevin, I've been listening to you. I ain't gonna lie, Kevin. I didn't agree with the things you say before, but oh, Jesus, it, it come to my door now. Oh, it come to your door now. Or oh, now, now you will see me now. No, boy, uh-uh. I ain't playing with them. So the, Jesus made it very clear. But God made it initially clear to tell you how to identify these vultures. How to identify these money hungry. See, and I keep using the word vultures and money hungry crooks because Jesus himself said in Matthew 7 verse 15. In fact, let's read that because I want you to understand the intensity of what Jesus was trying to convey here. Matthew 7 verse 15. Jesus says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are revening wolves. And I told you what that word revening means. It means those who are only after your pocket. They are robbers. They, they are stealth thieves. You, they robbing you and you don't even know. And the bottom line is this. All they're about is their finances, wealth, and lifestyle. So now that they have already acquired this off of your back, and this is, watch, watch how crafty they are. They now stand up on the pulpits. Look what God has done for me. Look here, my wife have a brand new 2021 Lexus. My grandson, who only two months old, I buy him a whole Rolls Royce. And I got all my dogs, them, they got Lamborghinis and all of that, right? Look how God has blessed me. Now listen what he's calling the blessing. He's putting a demand on you to pay 10%, even though the Bible don't require it. He's telling you, you got to sow first fruit, last fruit, third fruit, billy goat fruit, jump around, kangaroo fruit, everybody else fruit. You need seed, apple, you need all of this. He's the only one who's getting it. Now he's showing he show you how stupid you are. Look what God has done for me. He ain't doing it for you, but look what he did for me. Look what he did on, on, at your expense, at, on your backs. Listen, I just wish the government could put a law in place where they could introduce public flogging for these people. What would they do to people? Like I say, y'all will never feel it until it happened to y'all or it happened to your children. See, that's when people come to reality. You letting these people just rob you, rob you blind, and you you are in such awe when you hear Doctor Reverend So and So Apostle to the third power. You just razzle and dazzle. But I don't care what you call yourself. If you can't bring me that word, I ain't listening to you. Jesus said in verse 16 of Matthew 7, you shall know them by their fruit. Oh, I love that piece. You shall know them by their fruit. First Corinthians, sorry, Galatians chapter 5. All right? Beginning at verse 16, speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. Meekness, gentleness, love, joy, peace. These are the things. But then I also see some fruits or the manifestation of the flesh. Witchcraft, idolatry, all of these things that represent or are indicative of the false prophet and prophetess. People, if we go by the laws of God, we can identify these people right away. None of them are telling you give to the poor. None of them are telling you look up for your neighbor. None of them. Everything is give a seed. To, 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 to put a down payment on your blessing or to, to release your blessing, you got to sow a seed. Nowhere are you being encouraged to help a fellow brother and sister. No, just give it all to the preacher, give it all to the church, and God is going to bless you, even though there's no scriptures for it. But nobody wants to hear that. No, they got their uh, damage control committee. Oh, they're coming to fight you. They're coming to, oh, no, you always come to the man. No, okay, now that, now that you know that I always coming for the man. Now, I get, you heard my scriptures, right? Now, show me yours. Don't come change no narrative. Show me where God say, if I give my money to the prophetess, if I give it to the pastor, if I give it to the church, he can drop a sack of money on the sky for me. He can give me a brand new. Show it to me. Show it to me. 
Show me where he says, if I give it to the church, I will not lack anymore. Show it. Show me where it says, if I give it to you, pastor, I, I'll be debt free. No, but I can show you where if I give it to the poor, it will happen to me. A spiritual attic of these people. Simultaneously, you're dismissing the word of God. And you only go on what they tell you. And everything, this is how you know they are not of God. This is how you know they are false. Everything they tell you comes with a price tag. Everything they give you, say to you, advice, everything, there's an invoice attached to it. They have no faith in God. In fact, I would go as far as saying they don't believe in God. Because I cannot see how you could trifle with a God who has the power to put you in hell for eternity and you could gamble with your life like that by lying to his people. So I have to conclude they cannot believe in the God that we serve. So let's go to J Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah 23. And I want you to listen to this. And we're going to read from verse 11 to verse 13. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. Listen. For I will bring evil upon them even this year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Listen to verse 13. Because it's going to give us some potent information about these crooks. Verse 13 of Jeremiah 23 says, And I have seen folly or foolishness in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied, listen, they prophesied in Jehovah Rapha, no. They prophesied in the God of Abraham, no. They prophesied in Jehovah Elohim, no. So who were they prophesying by again? They prophesied by Baal, which is a Canaanite demonic god. So they were getting their consultation, they were getting their prophetic declarations and so-called word of God, quote-unquote, from an evil spirit. And I've seen foolishness in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal, and listen, listen as a result of the people who did not discern who they really were. He says, not only were they prophesying by Baal, uh, but they caused my people Israel to err. E-R-R. -R. That word, that is such a powerful word because it just doesn't mean to make a mistake. It means to not only make the mistake, but you have been shift and now going in the opposite direction that you should have been going in. The original Hebrew word for that word, I looked it up, that's what it means. That's the depth of the understanding of it. You they didn't just get you to say, oh Lord, I messed up, go and give them my money, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Something worse happened. When you gave them your money, when you took that cloth, when you took that miracle voodoo oil, when you did all of that garbage, you engaged in a spiritual covenant. So the Bible says, not only did you mess up, but they have the ability because you are green and shift your destiny. They've caused my people to go backward then. They've caused my people to be realigned and put on a destiny that I had nothing to do with. Scripture. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Jeremiah 2 verse 8. Jeremiah 2 and verse 8. And we importing these crooks from all over the world. Every time before Corona came, they every, every time you look at one fly on Facebook, one night only with the prophet, Two nights only with the prophetess, all the way from so and so, a man or woman of God who is so accurate and blah blah blah. And what you read to the bottom, miracles, signs, and wonders. And I don't ever, and I always say to myself, I always say to myself, you don't believe if signs and miracles really took place there. You don't think that have been all over the news. You don't think that have been all over Facebook. You don't think that been going viral over Twitter and YouTube. You don't think people would have been sending that WhatsApp. Well, you're lucky. See, see this this woman. Remember, all right? Remember, she didn't have no leg, and the prophet and prophets came there and prayed, and the leg grew back. You don't ever see none of that. Now, let me tell you the fine print, which you didn't read. Miracles will take place. Disappearing acts will take place. What they mean is the disappearing of your money. Or all of that. That's the only miracle that can take place there. Any place you are going that is calling a place a calling it a place of God, miracles, signs, and wonders, and they are asking you to pin things on your garment, to hold different cloths, and so on. You ever, you ever question that? 
No, you don't. Because you respect this prophet or prophet is more than you respect the Almighty God. But I can give you some scriptures today. We're going to wake you up. All right? So in Jeremiah 2 verse 8, listen what he says. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the Lord knew me not. They're using the word of God, but they don't know God. They that handled the Lord knew me not. The pastors, listen carefully, the pastors also transgressed against me. But how did they do that? By allowing these vultures to deceive the people of God. By sitting back, knowing what they're doing is wrong, but you say nothing. You are a co-conspirator of their evil, according to Romans 1 verse 32. And you'll be equally punished as those who are actually doing, doing it, according to Romans 1 verse 32. He says, the, the pastors, according to the scriptures here, sorry, the, the priest said, I'm going to start from verse 8 again of Jeremiah 2. The priest said, not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the Lord knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets, what did the prophets do? Prophesied by Baal. And after things, that do not profit. I don't think you'll understand the gravity of what he's saying here. He said, the pastors have transgressed. But watch the next sentence, because it's really explaining how they transgress. He says, the pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophet and prophetess were prophesying according to Baal. So the pastor sat back and he knew. He knew. But he says, you know what? This is a money maker here. This one, you're asking for all kinds of seed. I ain't gonna stop that. No. Let me let them see because nobody's looking at the spiritual damage and carnage that is being left in the path of these vultures. See, nobody's pointing you to the spiritual aspect of what's happening. And guess what? When you finally get a 50, 52, 60, 70 and never accomplish nothing in life, you will never attach it to when you encounter this false prophet and prophetess who gave you something to hold on to to secure failure in your life. The pastor said right back in a 16-piece suit and they ain't saying nothing to you. God says, don't worry about that. I can deal with you too. So the scriptures are clear here. We can't run away from it. We can't hide from it, right? Now, let's go now to a story. Let's go to, to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, all right? And we're going to read from verse 16 to verse 16. And I know a lot of you are familiar with this particular scripture, right? Acts chapter 16, and we're going to begin at verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel or woman, listen now, possessed with a spirit of divination. I gave you the meaning of this word last week. And I tell you this, this, this divination is really a spiritual communication system between the false prophet, prophetess, the soothsayer, the witchcraft worker. This is how they communicate with the demonic spiritual realm. So when a familiar spirit is possessing someone, they communicate with the spiritual world through the process called divination. All right? So the Bible is making it very clear here that this young girl, okay, was possessed, meaning that this spirit lived in her. And it allowed her to foretell or to predict future events. But to the unlearned, spiritually unlearned, that is, it would appear as if she is a worker of God or from the kingdom of light. So the Bible says here, and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain dame so possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by so saying. Now again, let's go back to Matthew 7, verse 15. Jesus says, beware of the false prophets, for they will come to you as wolves, but their attire or dress and sheep, they're revening wolves, meaning that they are only, and the, how I'm going to know, this is, they're always after money. Money will always be the big ticket. Not soul saving, not preaching about hell, not talking about crime and injustice, none of that. It will always boil down to who getting an invoice. So here what the Bible says here, Paul them already discovered or discerned that yeah, she, she's, she's making some accurate prophecies 
but they already knew through the spirit that she had a spirit of divination, meaning she was communicating with devils that was telling her things that others would not know or they feel she shouldn't have known. But the Bible says that she brought her masters. So that means who was sponsoring this? Who witches and warlocks were sponsoring this woman who gave the impression as if she was a woman of God? And he said that it brought their masters much gain. So after the, the, the three night revival with the prophetess, after the four night revival with the prophet, okay, everybody then go, now let's split up this money. How much we make tonight? 40,000? Oh man, that, that, boom, that ain't, no, 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 no. We tonight, we, we was looking at least for $50,000. Okay, so that means we can have to do four set offering tomorrow. All right? Four set offering. And let me see. Now you need to go online and Google up the best marketing skills for getting, this got nothing to do with God. This have nothing to do with God. But again, where you so churchy and I got to be in church, I got to hear from the man of God. You need to hear from God. You need to get into your Bible. You need to pray. You need to fast. You, The Bible says you, not the prophet, you, not your pastor, you, not the bishop, you, not king. You must work out your own salvation. That is your responsibility. And if you feel you got for some joker with 1,500 pieces of suit on to come here to give you a word, the Bible is filled, saturated, overflowing, overwhelming with the word of God. But you don't want that. Because mm -mm. the word you're looking for, you want here, you get in car, host, promotion, husband, all this other garbage. So they know, they know just how to target and, and, and use someone like you. So the Bible says here, and it came to pass, as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by so saying, or predicting the future. Verse 17 of, Mark, of Acts 16. The same followed Paul, meaning this girl, Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So again, just like Jesus said, look at this wolf. Who is attired in sheep clothing? What do you mean in sheep clothing? Because she's saying now these are true men of God. These are so you would say, boy, now clearly she can be of the devil if she calling Paul them true men of God. But again, you just don't understand how deep the deception goes. Why would she go against them when her object is to get money? You gotta give her more money because they said, well, if these people are of God and you saying they're of God. Then some people saying you of the devil. I don't believe them. I don't believe you of the devil if you're going to call the true man of God a man of God. So watch this now. It says in verse 18, and this did she many days, meaning every day she followed them, say, yeah, y'all, that's, that's Paul them. They, they, they're the disciples of Jesus. They're the followers of Christ. So she isn't discouraging anyone from them. All right? And, did, and this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, Turned, I love this, I love this. Listen carefully now. Listen carefully. Paul was so upset, he finally turned around and he said, listen to what he said. He said to the spirit. He ain't talking to the woman because he know the woman is only a tool or a body that the spirit of divination is using. The spirit that's giving her these prophecies and these so-called prophetic words, Paul says, I'm addressing you. Not the woman, because she is just a, 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 a house that he's, the spirit is inhabiting. So the Bible says, and, and verse 18, And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that same hour. Listen to verse 19 because it's going to give more empirical evidence of how you identify these financial rapists. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone. Boy, y'all can imagine how much they hate me. Y'all know if there wasn't no law for murder. They'd have to give them a ticket each so who could get to kill me first. Why? Because they're being exposed through the word of God. And every one of them who are angry right now and cursing me, it is you that I'm speaking to. And I am giving you your warning. Go and get saved. Repent and apologize to the people whose lives you have destroyed. 
the Bible says, and this she many days, but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. Verse 19. And when a master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, the money train finished now, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Hey, hey, come. Judge, this man, you need to lock him up. The same Paul fella here. Okay? Now, I had my obed and fix around here and my witchcraft and sandaria and everything was running smooth. Okay? Now, he didn't come and mess up. So, I wonder what they told the judges. Did they say, that's like taking witchcraft to court. How do I go and tell the judge, judge, listen, I, they, they put some evil spirits in front of my door. Because <laughs> I would have loved to see in the law books for back then. I mean, is there some law for that? But anyway, the point I'm making here is, if we don't go by scripture, and this scripture is a classic example to see that a person could be accurate in their prophecies, but not necessarily be uh, supported or sponsored by the kingdom of God. But how would you know that if you don't know the entirety of the scriptures in terms of as it relates to false prophet and prophetess? How, how would you be able to tell the difference? Let's go over here to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 7, and we're going to read from verse 8 to verse 12. Exodus chapter 7, we're going to read from verse 8 to verse 12. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. So the Bible is saying now, Moses, when you and your brother Aaron go before Pharaoh, I can tell you right now, because they deal with magic, because they deal with the supernatural, the demonic, they will know which God's sponsoring you. So they're going to ask you for a miracle to convince them. So he says, now when he does that, you tell Aaron to take his staff and throw it to the ground and it will become a serpent. See, back then, just like now, these people dealt with the supernatural. Don't mind what they put on the outside. Don't mind the cloth and the pow, pow, puff, puff. Behind what they're saying, behind what they're doing is entirely demonic. And anyone who's participating in that with them or who they claim to be delivering, by all they're doing is loading you up with devils. So the Bible says here in verse 11, Then Pharaoh... Sorry, verse 10. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Watch verse 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. So these were all witchcraft workers or people that serve other gods. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. So the Bible says they threw their staff on the ground also and begin to now enchant or begin to chant, calling up specific spirits that will now transform their staffs into snakes. Now, before we get to the part where Aaron's staff consumed, Aaron's, Aaron's staff that became a serpent consumed their staffs and also became serpents, before we get there, because this now ties to Acts 16. If you don't know these things that I'm telling you, and the only thing you're thriving on is, I can't wait for my breakthrough to come. I need to hear from a prophet or prophetess. How are you able to decipher that the prophet or the prophetess that's declaring and speaking into your life, that you have fully opened your life up to, because you don't understand, you have no idea the spiritual protocols that you're following when you open up yourself and you say, I receive, speak, prophesy, Papa, prophesy, prophet, prophesy, prophetess, I receive, prophetess. You realize if this person is a false prophet, declaring stuff into your life from the kingdom of darkness, now do you see the spiritual implications that you are taking on? See, they got you because I hear God, look how they dress in the case for you. God says that that woman that took your husband, I see God restoring your marriage. I see you all building together. All of these nice things they're telling you. Now watch the next move. God says, hold your hand up and read, woman of God, do you receive the prophecy? Oh yes, I receive the prophecy. 
From who? Who is sponsoring what she's saying? Who sponsored the damsel back in the day of Paul who was possessed with a spirit of divination because she was declaring some, some stuff that came to pass. In fact, in fact, she was affirming that Paul and his crew was from God. But who was sponsoring these so-called prophetic prophecies? What did they put on that cloth? What did they put in that water? Where did they have that oil? What did they chant over that? But because there are wolves in sheep clothing, and you so gung ho over prophecies, you taking it every day. You drinking it every day. You know what? It will, it will amaze you to see the statistics of those who went to these places for healing and took all of these cloths and oils and look at the deaths. Look how many of them had died a premature death as a result of it. Why? Because they had no idea that when they took those things as a point of contact, they were being initiated to those altars and would become a sacrifice and would be added to the credit of that false prophet and prophetess. They didn't know that because they don't read these things and nobody's going to teach them that. So they, they're proud to tell people, child, when I wake up in the morning, not I went and pray and tell God to cover my children, not I put on the whole arm of God, child, I took my oil and I put that to my front door and I don't care what old bear they got there, ain't nothing happening. So you have more confidence in the oil than the creator of the oil, which is God. See, you walking away from God and don't even realize it. You are totally, you are in a, just like the scripture says, these false prophets who prophesy via Baal has caused my people to err. And you quick, and this is how you know it's not of God, you are quick to fight and to defend them, even though they're robbing you, even though from the time you came and you lost your business, you lost your bank account, you've lost your home, but they're convincing you, keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, because your breakthrough can come one day. And you, you see them living high off the hog, while you, like a lackey, supporting them. Man, they should flog you publicly. They should beat you publicly to be an example to everybody else. How foolish could you be? Where did our Savior, where did God put these rules in his law that you have to jump over all of these hurdles to get? He says, listen to what he said, very clear. Deuteronomy 18, let me, let me tell you that there right now. Deuteronomy chapter 18, 28. Deuteronomy, let me show you how simple it is. Deuteronomy 28, beginning at verse 1. Listen carefully. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which is his word, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set, I will promote you. Why are you promoting me, God? Because I give a seed? No. Because I paid for miracle oil? No. Because I got a show and blow it? No. Because I put a scarf on me? No. Why are you going to promote me? Because you are following my law, Kevin. So if I follow your law, will it end there? No, 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 Kevin, continue to read. He says, I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Let's stop and let's go back to the beginning again. Because everything that he's about to promise here is hinging on the word if. And it shall come to pass, verse 1 of Deuteronomy 28, if, circle that word, it's a conjunction. Meaning that what he is about to promise you will be dependent on whether you do what he asks you to do. Did you read in here, miracle cloth, miracle, miracle chicken, uh, spicy, crispy, miracle, super strength, improved, Chicken, you, did you read any of that garbage? No, you didn't read it. So how could someone come to you and tell you, I see God, I see like there's some kind of inheritance, millions of dollars. God said the enemy has held it up. How did he held it up? So, okay, how do we release it then? I hear God say you have to sow a seed of two, all I'm seeing is Two zero two two thousand twenty one. God said, the minute you release that, oh no no no, you crook, no no no, you slow belly devil. I am reading from the scriptures, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all His commandments. You crook, all His commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord.
The Lord God will set me on high. He came and I will position you for what I already put in place for you. Don't allow someone to come and add to my word. Don't allow someone to come and take from my word and to convince you to pay for it now. That person is a devil. They are not of Christ. They are no different from the damsel that was possessed by the spirit of divination in Acts 16. They are devils. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Watch the word again. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice. I didn't see a if you bought the miracle cloth. If you buy the red cloth. If you buy the Jesus gloves. If you buy the Jesus slippers. I didn't read that. So who gave you the spiritual authority to alter the word of God as it relates to releasing the blessing in our lives? Where you now could put an invoice on me. People wake up. People wake up. People wake up. Wake up. These vultures ain't playing. They ain't playing at all. All right? Now, so far I've shown you, I've shown you in Acts 16. Now we can get deep now. Now we're going into deep surgery. And I put on your scuba gear, because if you ain't got on the right oxygen tank, I don't, I can't guarantee you're coming back up alive, okay? Because we go to something extremely controversial right now. All right? But before we get there, let me just pre, let me fix it for you first. Now, last week I told you about the definition of familiar spirit, right? And divination. Now, I didn't want to go into this, but I have to define it again for those who are just listening. Part two, not part one. Because what I'm about to say now, it can all make sense to you. I said to you, a familiar spirit is an evil spirit that is either assigned to a person or inherited by them. This spirit serves this person or prompts them in regards to certain information. So what that means is that a familiar spirit could be assigned to your life if there's a curse on your family. Because their job is to ensure that whatever the curse, which means whatever contract was made between the spirits and whoever in your family, whether that nobody lives beyond 60, whether you never get married, whether you develop diabetes, high blood pressure, once you see a consistency of this in your family, which we call generational curses, well, the power behind that, that's enforcing those things to happen, these are familiar spirits, which are also known as masquerading spirits and so on. Because in your dreams, they will come to you as animals or deceased relatives, right? That's one way. The other way is like the same girl in Act 16, where they possessed her with this spirit to predict, to forecast the future. But these are all demonic stuff. Remember, this is spirit now. Now, also, remember, I gave you uh, Leviticus 19, and I have to do this because I'm going to give you, we're going into a scripture that it's going to make sense to you. I gave you Leviticus 19, verse 31 last week. And what did it say? We are warned. It says, regard not them that have a familiar spirit, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. There are some churches who are occultic in nature, but they got the name Jesus and all of that. And the minute you step foot on that property, you are automatically initiated. So how do you, how, where's the evidence of this, Kevin? Because those who go there, this is how blind they are by the spirits that are there, through the familiar spirit. Those who go there will be completely convinced by the performers that perform there, such as the prophet is not a prophet. And they will fight tooth and nail for them. They will defend them on, at, at every level. Never giving you scriptures, never supporting the word of God, but only what prophets say and what this one say. So all they want to do is get them there. Now once they get there, now either you come there, once you come there you initiate it, or whatever products, because there's three ways this has happened. If you step your foot on there, now all of this is based on Leviticus 19 verse 31. Because you are, you are warned, do not have no affiliations with them. Because if you go against the scripture, then the, simultaneously the scripture give these forces the right to deal with you now. They got the upper hand. Remember, God is a just and a fair God. You can't go mess around evil and say, well, this ain't happening because I was a child of God. No, he's a fair judge. So watch this now. You come on the property, boom, you initiate it. 
because there are many things planted on that so-called church property, which I, I did a series on this called When Altars Are Raised Against Churches. You can go and watch it. There are certain things planted on that property. And even before I did the teaching on church mafia, where I was using the book by uh, Makaro, the guy from Africa, who was once a false prophet and showing all of the tricks, even before I read his book, I spoke on these things already. He came and back up everything that I was saying all along. So if you come on that property, you're under a spell, meaning that you're initiated. If you purchase anything, you don't have to go there now, but they have a website where they're selling pillow, altars, juice, popcorn, all this garbage. You purchase that, well then that's a point of contact. So when that get into your place, in your car, wherever you have it, then the spirits that's attached to that place have the right to dominate your life. The third way, which is the most common way, is when they say to you, partner with us covenant with us. Look at the words that they're using. Why, if I want to donate money to your ministry after covenant, you know what a covenant is, right? See, donate. Why don't you just send money? No. See, when you start giving your money to them, this is how they initiate you through your own funds. So you watch and see. Watch and see how your finances are going to go down. Watch and see how you can maintain financial stability. But you will, because you're ignorant of these spiritual implications, you will never tie that this church caused it. This prophet costs it. This prophet, you will never do it. And it's designed to be that way. So like I said, in, with, 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 with familiar spirits, they're the ones who possess or control a certain group, people, whatever. And they communicate to the human beings through the communication system of divination. Now, that was important for me to make you understand because I'm going to take you into a scripture that's going to open your eyes completely to everything I've been telling you so far, all right? Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel 28, all right? 1 Samuel 28. And I can see this can be a part three because I cannot do all of this, but I have to get this one in. 1 Samuel chapter 28, and I want you all to play, pay close attention to every word that I say to you right now. I build a foundation for this scripture alone, okay? Remember, familiar spirits, you are told not to deal with them, right? You are told not to bother with them according to Leviticus 19 and verse 31, all right? which makes it extremely clear that we should have no dealings with them. I will give you one more scripture before we go there. Let's go to Isaiah 8 verse 19. Isaiah 8 verse 19. And what does it say? Well, Isaiah 8 verse 19 tells us how these familiar spirits operate. And it says here, And when they shall say unto you, when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirit. Boy, Kevin, look, again, no body prophet. You've been to the church, and they never call you out. I mean, they prophesy to everybody. Anyway, let's go. I know a fellow who live around the corner here. Let's go now. They mean someone who got a familiar spirit now. Excuse me. So verse 19 of Isaiah 8 says, And when, excuse me, they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirit, and unto wizards, which would be witches, warlocks, and so on. Listen, listen. That peep and that mutter. So they're chanting. Now to you they will say they're speaking in tongues. Foolishness. You know tongues here. Well they are speaking in tongues but nothing to do with God. So they're summonsing the familiar spirit who got some little safest knowledge on you. So the Bible says here in verse 19 it says and when they shall say unto you seek unto them that have familiar spirit and unto wisdom that peep and mutter should not a people seek unto God. For the living and not the dead. So he's saying to you, why are you going to the kingdom of darkness and using that system, which is going to cost you in the end, to see what's going on in the future? Why? And he says, anyone who have a familiar spirit is not of God. Whether it's a false prophet or witch or whatever. Good. Now with that said, let's go now back here to 1 Samuel 28. So 1 Samuel 28, and we're going to begin at verse 3. 1 Samuel 28, let's begin at verse 3, okay? Now listen, please, please, 
my time, listen carefully. My time is almost limited, but listen, please listen to me. And, and remember, everything I've taught you so far, divination, familiar spirit, false prophet, selling you items, all of this other stuff, listen carefully. 1 Samuel 28, verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. Remember, Samuel was the infamous, or the, sorry, the famous prophet of the day, all right? Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul, who was the king at that time, who ordained, Samuel was the one who ordained him to be king through instructions of God. It says, and Saul had put away those that had, listen, Saul, which was the king of Israel, had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So Saul, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel, when he took office, one of the first things that he did, all witches, warlocks, all false prophet and prophetess, who were all equipped by familiar spirits out of Israel. Listen to verse 4. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. Verse 5 of 1 Samuel 28. And when Saul saw that the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired, this is key, this is key, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. See, because he wasn't obedient to God anymore, so God now dismissed him. So when he inquired of the Lord, the Lord didn't answer him. Now listen the avenues that he didn't answer him, because these were the common avenues God would speak to his people. God didn't answer him by dreams, nor by Urim, U-R-I-M, nor by the prophets. So God shut down every form of communication with Saul. Who is doing this again? Let's be clear. God Almighty. Nobody could supersede the power of God, right? Let's be clear because this is going to all make sense. This is why I put so much emphasis on it, all right? So Saul have no communication with the kingdom of light. Now watch this now. Verse 7 of 1 Samuel 28. Then said Saul unto his servants, listen carefully, seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit. In other words, seek me a witch, seek me a warlock, seek me someone who dabble in wickedness. Remember, this is the same brother who tells him, oh, you're already here. Because God ain't answering him now, he says, you know what, and a lot of you like that right now, okay? God taking too long. So let me go to the old bear man. Oh, hey, you know what? I ain't gotta go to the fake stereotype in church and do it. Let me go to the fake prophetess. Let me go to the one I worship, the prophet and the and the prophetess. And let me see what, what they got to say. So the Bible says here, verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And the servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit in Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine. Okay? Which comes from the same word divination, meaning tap into the demonic realm and tell me what's happening over there. Because God ain't answered me at all. Remember, this is a witch. All right? Listen. So we tell the woman here now. Let's go back to verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the women by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me. By, do this by the familiar spirit. And bring me up. Listen. Bring me up whom I shall name unto thee. Now, long story short. He is asking this witch to bring Samuel from the dead. Now, if we go back to the original rules in Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 to verse 11, thou shall, these are abominations unto the Lord, and you shall have no dealings with. No witch, no warlock, no necromancy, those that claim to speak to the dead. You should have nothing to do with familiar spirits. Okay? These are the rules. Uh, Leviticus 19, verse 31, don't fool with nobody with familiar spirit. 
lest they defile you. We went to Acts 16 verse 16. We realized that a familiar spirit possessed all of this from the kingdom of darkness. This have nothing to do with God. Now listen to this now. He's asking this witch to bring up Samuel. Samuel who've already completed his assignment on this earth and is in wherever he is on God's side. Now, if God shut you down in dreams, no prophet could speak to you. Every means that God would have communicated with his people back then is shut off. Let's be sensible. How could a witch access Samuel to speak to Saul? Let's read. The Bible says here in our verse 9, And the woman said unto him, The witch is saying unto Saul, King Saul, Behold, thou knowest that Saul had done. See, she don't realize that this is Saul she's speaking to who has disguised himself because he know how much of a hypocrite he would be that he cast them out of Israel, these witches and warlocks and familiar spirits, but now he's seeking the services of one. So the woman said in verse 9 of 1 Samuel 28, And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul had done. Now he had cut off those that have familiar spirits, which he have, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore they layest thou a snare or a trap for my life to cause me to die. So he said, Boy, you come here, ask me to call up this thing. You, you forget me supposed to do these things, eh? So watch verse 10. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, as the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Verse 11. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Now this is going to get so deep right now because all of this is showing you. There's a, there's a super false prophet we have here in the Bahamas. And I ain't going to play with you. I ain't going to call the name. There's a super false prophet, all right? And let me tell you why I have the right to say that. Because I watch it myself, and it's still on YouTube, and I have a copy of it, where this super false prophet claims that they were able to call up a dead voodoo person who had the person who was in front of the prophet. She's telling this person, someone fix you. And the people they went to, the witch doctor is dead. But I'm going to call the dead person from the grave in your body, so that I could speak to them for them to tell me what they did. Ready in the Bahamas. And I watch the people on the oh, prophesy, woman of God, and they cheat because they don't know this information. They don't know this information. So that person who you call in prophetess, read your Bible. You are reading where a witch is claiming, a witch is claiming to call up deceased Samuel. How could the living God, who's telling you we, should, we could never participate in necromancy, calling up the dead. We should never be dealing with, with, with people with familiar spirit and divination. Why would God say, you know what, I shut it down in dreams. I got no prophet and prophet is speaking to you. But you know what I can do though? I can allow a witch to come into my kingdom and bring Saul out to come and speak to you. Now you got to be super stupid if you believe that. But apparently some people are because they're following these false prophets who could claim to speak to the deceased loved ones. Oh, mama say everything will be okay. Mama couldn't take care of me or, or protect me when she was living. How she can help me in death? Anyway, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Now listen now. Verse 11 of 1 Samuel 28. Then said the woman, now let's be clear, this woman is the witch of Endor who has a familiar spirit that Saul initially told his servants, find me a woman who have a familiar spirit because God ain't answering me in dreams. He ain't answering me by the prophet and prophetess and by the other thing called the Urim, U-R-I-M, okay? So in verse 11 he says, then said the woman, who shall I bring up to thee? Who shall I call up from the grave? And he which is Saul said, Bring me up Samuel. Verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? Thou art you are Saul. Now let's pause. 
Because you know how we go, we like scream and shout, say we preach it, but never understanding the text. Because it's easy to see what you just read. Because based on what we just read there, she, quote unquote, literally called up deceased Samuel. Remember what I told you about familiar spirits? Remember they also regarded as masquerading spirits, taking on the appearance of someone, only to deceive the victims. But this is a nothing new. When we shoot over there to the book of Corinthians, when Paul say, marvel not, for even Satan himself has the ability to masquerade as an angel of light. So does his ministers as ministers of righteousness, false apostles and fake prophets and so on. See, you got to study your Bible. You got to read. You got to work out your own self. Don't wait for someone on the pulpit to give you some gimmick to give you an invoice afterwards. So clearly, this is not Saul, but a familiar spirit masquerading as Saul. We can see more evidence right now. Watch this. Okay, so verse 12, let's start 11 again. Then said the woman, which was the witch, whom shall I bring up to thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Verse 12 of 1 Samuel 28. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou, you are Saul. Verse 13. And the king, which is Saul, said unto her, be not afraid. For what sawest thou? What did you see? And the woman said unto Saul, listen carefully. This is how you're going to know that the so-called Samuel, that she's claiming to be Samuel, is not Samuel. Listen to the text and look at the wording. Verse 13 says, And the king, which was Saul, said unto her, which was the witch of Endor, who is possessed by a familiar spirit, said, Be not afraid, for what hast thou saw? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods. Now look at the word gods on your Bible. That's not a capital G, right? You see a small g. She said, I saw gods, which are foul spirits, devils. That's what they are. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. I saw evil spirits then coming up. Evil entities. Listen now. Verse 14, and he said unto her, what form is he of? Now, let's back up. He said to call up Saul, as far as she's concerned, she called up Saul. She realized, sorry, Samuel, she called up Samuel. She realized now, if, I, if this is really Samuel, the prophet, then this got to be Saul over here. So when she figured out, she started crying. He said, no, don't worry, but that ain't going to happen to you. Watch this now. So he said, what did you see though? What did you see? Go back to verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, remember Samuel is dead, but she's claiming that through her incantation and so on, she brought him up. But I'm confused here. You saying you see Samuel in verse 12. But when we drop to verse 13, and she said, and the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods, plural, ascending out of the earth. Now you're confusing me now. You say you saw Saul, Saul earlier. I'm trying to show you through divination how these spirits are taking on the form of Saul. Samuel. I keep saying Saul. Samuel is the deceased one. They're taking on the form of Samuel to convince foolish Saul as well as this witch as if they're bringing up the actual Samuel. That cannot be the case if God had shut down all means of communication. So that which must be more powerful than God then. Because if you believe that, she has to be more powerful than, that no matter how God tried to shut down uh, avenues of communication, there's some powerful witch out there who can take a back door. It cannot be so because I have littered you with scriptures that is against familiar spirit, against necromancy. The Bible says that when a person die, according to Ecclesiastes 9, verses 4 to 6, the dead knows nothing. For the living know that they shall die. 
when a person die, they love, they hate, they envy, everything come to an end, and they have no more portion under the sun. That's what the scripture says. The scripture further goes on to say in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 19, 16 to 31 where it gives the parable about the rich man and Lazarus in their living state and then in their dead state and he told that rich man you cannot go back up there when a person is dead that is it so don't come talk no mess to me but you see your grammy in the dream you see your deceased uncle or brother they are familiar spirits trying to achieve covenants with you to have access to your life but we ain't going there today we be on a different run today so now she says, I saw gods, listen, small g, evil spirits, like the like god of Baal, the god of Molech, the god of Ashtoreth. This is all to do with the kingdom of darkness. Why is this so important? Why you keep pounding this in our head, Kevin? Let's continue to read. Verse 14. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel. I guess it, it sounds like Samuel, so I guess it is Samuel. Listen now. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped, stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now listen who he's bowing to. The scripture says, woman, what did you see? I saw gods ascending, coming up out of the earth. The Bible says, when Saul heard this, he bowed. But who is he bowing to? Gods that is appearing to look like Samuel. This is key. Listen now, verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul. So the evil spirit, the familiar spirit, the masquerading spirit, who is pretending to be Saul, is saying to, sorry, pretending to be Samuel, saying to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me? And Saul answered, I, I am so distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. And God has departed from me. God has departed from you. God ain't speaking to you. But who will give you the right? How you can call up someone who's in God's kingdom? God ain't talking to you, but he's going to release Samuel to come talk to you? Watch this now. And Samuel said unto him, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistine make war against me. And God has departed from me, and answered me no more, neither by prophet nor by dream. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make unto me what I shall do. Verse 16. Then said Samuel, Wherefore, thou dost, wherefore, wherefore then dost thou ask of me, see the Lord, this is what he says, seeing the Lord is depart from thee and has become thine enemy. So look how these spirits play in him. The spirit even saying, now you're so stupid that the Lord ain't talking to you. But for some reason you believe that this woman could really call me up to her. From, from somehow I could circumvent God's authority and come to you through the, the, the summonsing of a witch. Listen to verse 17. And the Lord had done and the Lord had done to him as he spoke. Sorry, 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 I got ahead of myself. Verse 16. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, saying, The Lord is depart from thee, and is become thine enemy. And the Lord had done to him as he spoke by me. For the Lord had rent or torn the kingdom out of thine hand, and given to thy neighbor, even David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon the Amalekites. Therefore had the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. So, so far, listen, familiar spirit. They, they got information. So they're taking that information and using it on Saul now to convince them. Well, you know why the Lord is doing this to you, right? Because you disobeyed when you were supposed to kill all the Amalekites. You didn't do it. So this is a no mystery. All of this, this is, this is why it's called a familiar spirit. They're familiar with his life, with the events and what's going on. Now they're using that information because you're going to think now, this is somebody of God. This is someone of God. Watch this. Verse 18. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Verse 19 of 1 Samuel 28. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow, listen, this is the familiar spirit prophesying. 
This is the familiar spirit or the masquerading spirit in the form of deceased Samuel telling Saul future events. You will lose to the Philistines. And all of these things that this familiar spirit is saying is correct. But one reading this, this is of God. But how could you think that if the witch brought him up? And how could the witch circumvent God shutting down all access of communication to Saul? But he's given it to a witch? Watch this. Verse 19. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. Listen. And tomorrow shall thou, meaning you, Saul, and your son be with me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who was with me? Samuel. You remember I Samuel. But really, who am I? I'm a familiar spirit. So the familiar spirit was masquerading as Samuel is saying, hey, look here. You're going to lose. God is going to deliver the children of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. He already know this. This is true. But guess what? Tomorrow, you come into hell with us. You and your boy. Come on, you could say that. Well, let's go back to what the woman said. I saw ascending out of the earth gods. These are demon spirits who now is taking on the form of who? Samuel. So Samuel, who's deceased, but is being impersonated by familiar spirits, is now giving this prophecy to living Saul. Yeah, God will punish you all because of your disobedience. Israel will be held captive by the Philistines. But let me be clear with you, though. Tomorrow, we can be right down in hell waiting on you and your children. Now, listen to this, right? Because I know you're all saying, but Kevin, you're running out. But I can give you more proof and we can shut down right now. Verse 19 says, Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. This is the masquerading spirit, Samuel speaking now. And tomorrow shall thou and thy son be with me. Listen, the Lord also shall deliver the house of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Verse 20. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day and all night. Now put a full stop right there. We can end this right here. Not end this, because we can continue this next week. But I can give you this last scripture to prove to you everything that I've just said. Remember, this is an evil spirit masquerading as deceased Samuel, prophesying to Saul that Israel is going to be held captive, okay, by the enemies, the Philistines, and you and your son, you're all going to die tomorrow, but you all are not just going to die. I'm telling you where you're coming tomorrow, tomorrow, because you've never repented, you are going to come down here to hell with us. Now, let's prove that all of this is exactly what I said it was, all right? Samuel was not the real Samuel, but it was a masquerading familiar spirit, all right? Telling him this stuff. Let's look at our last scripture here, and then we'll continue with part three next week. So let's go here now to 1 Chronicles, again right here. Let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 10, uh-huh, and let's look at verse 13, okay? 1 Chronicles chapter 10, and let's look at verse 13, based on everything we have just read in uh, 1 Samuel 28, okay? 1 Chronicles 10, verse 13, right? What does it say? So Saul died, uh-huh, why did he die? For his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, okay, and what else? Even against the word of the Lord, and what that word was? Which he kept not. And also, listen very carefully, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. Are you reading this? To inquire of it. I rest my case right there. Case closed. Jury come back with the guilty verdict on these people, please. I, again, I don't add my opinion. I don't give whatever the Bible says, that's what I go on with. The Bible, that's why when you read 1 Samuel 28, and if you don't understand spiritual things, you will be convinced that what you're reading, that Samuel truly came up. But something should poke you and say, but how could that be? If God shut down all spiritual communication, how could a witch who God banned, who, who, who we give the authority to his leaders to have no dealings with them, how could they go and bring him, Samuel, up from the kingdom of God. How? Well, the Bible made it very clear. 
and it told you why he died. But that same spirit that had him fooled, that he should have had nothing to deal with, told him. He says, not only will Israel be delivered into the hands of the Philistines, but you and your son tomorrow will die. But guess what you're coming? You're coming down here with us. Who is this us? The gods that the witch saw coming up out of the earth, which was impersonating the, the, the person of, of Samuel. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for giving me the ability to articulate your word in such a way that even a child could understand it. I pray right now, Father God, that everyone under the sound of my voice that have ignorantly or even knowingly visit any house that claims to be a house of God, but truly was a den of thieves who was being, uh, that was being perpetrated by false prophet and prophetess, anyone that have purchased items from them which are cursed through their chants and incantations over those things, anyone that has been dipped in the sea or a body of water seven times by the prophet or prophetess or was advised to do it and they went and do it, anyone that's mopping their floor with turpentine, anyone that is using ammonia to put around their home to water of evil spirits, toting garlic on their person, anyone who is taking Psalms 91 and other scriptures and putting the name of the enemies and chanting at their enemies and returning. Father, every and anyone who sat under false prophets and prophetess, false pastors and apostles, and believed more in what they said and the items that were sold to them than your holy word, Father, I stand in the gap for them today and I pray God that this message will remove the scales from their eyes. I pray, God, that they would see it for what it really is. I pray, Father God, that whatever spell, hex, incantation, whatever spiritual hole that was legally placed upon them through the cooperation of the victim, Father, I pray that you break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, the prophet Isaiah said that they would have eyes but will not be able to see, ears and not, will not be able to hear. Father, please remove the curse, remove the hex, remove the spiritual hurdles, remove the blindness from their eyes so that the people will see that the path that they are on, where they have to pay for every miracle clot, pay for everything, everything they got to pay, pay the prophetess, pay the prophet, and Father, even the pastors that are sitting down and allowing these vultures to come on their pulpit to deceive your people. But I can't tell you judge them, but I know you will. But I pray that they will change. I pray that they will truly get saved and give their lives to the Lord and repent and apologize for what they have done to the body of Christ. Father, I pray that you will expose every evil demonic prophetess, every evil demonic prophet, every false teacher, preacher, everyone that is guiding your people meticulously to hell fire. But even before they get there, they are ensuring that they live a miserable deceitful life, deceiving your people, making them believe that if they pay them, put money on their account, buy these demonic items, that they would be right with you. When your word is extremely clear in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, if, if you hearken and observe to do the commandments of the Lord, then shall he put you on high, then shall he promote you, and that he will bless you in your going out and your coming in, if you continue to observe his laws, his rules, his commandments, and his ordinance. Father, I pray that you will bring justice in this land, not just here in the Bahamas, but throughout the length and breadth of the world, that for too long the deception, the lies, the trickery, the performances, the theatric, and all of this showboating that have nothing to do with God, but has convinced your people that they're on the right path, not knowing that the day is going to come if they do not change, if they do not allow their eyes and ears to be open, that they will be a part of the group that are going to say, Lord, didn't I do miracles in your name? Didn't I heal the sick? Didn't I do this? And you are going to have to break the news to them and say, hey, 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 I never knew you. You know why? Because even back in Pharaoh days, they were able to do miracle signs and wonders, but they were not sponsored by the God of Abraham. They were sponsored by the gods of Baal. They were sponsored by the gods that came ascending out of the earth in the time of Samuel, uh, of Saul. 
So, Father, I pray that these truths that I'm freely giving to your people, knowing voices, not asking them to sow into my life, not asking them to tap into this anointing, I pray that the people will wise up. I pray that the people will understand that when they give their money, give their seed to these demons, they are coming into agreement. They are coming into spiritual contracts, giving these vultures spiritual access to their lives, depleting and depriving them of their destiny and what God has truly called them to to be and to do in the earth. Father, I pray swift justice. I pray, Father, Father, bring an end to the foolishness and, and cause your house to be restored to a house of prayer. Because for right now, and from what I see in most houses, it has truly become a den of thieves. Father, I pray, move who you need to move and bring your people who are sold out to you to come and teach the unadulterated truth to your people. No more gimmicks, no more rhymes, no more getting oily up, no more of this foolishness. But pointing your people to the word of God, pointing your people that, listen, don't take my word for it. Look at the scripture. De develop a, relation script, uh, a relationship with the scripture, with the word of God, not man. Let your commitment, let your commitment be to God and his word. And to see the vessels of God as just that. Vessels, not people to be worshipped. Not people to be idolized. Father, I pray that you uproot the spirit of idolatry in our land. Where we worship our leaders. Where we worship our apostles. Worship our prophetess. Whatever they tell us to do, we do it. But if you ask us to go on a 30 second fast, we suck our teeth. We upset. We angry. We have every excuse in the world. But if they tell us, let's go down by profit of so and so and 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 so a hundred dollars. If you have to steal or borrow it, we will do it because we believe more than a mere mortal than we believe in the living God. Father, bring justice back here. Father God, bring your people. I know your remnant is out there. Bring them because we need them. This 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 virus of deception by these fake prophet and prophetess, they are spreading worse than the pandemic. In fact, the pandemic is a joke. Compared to these false vultures, these slow belly swines who are stealing people money. God will judge you and show us. My name is Kevin LAOA. For you to, to spiritually rob the people of God, steal their destinies, giving them false hopes and pies in the skies. And not only that, you invoice them at the end of your deception, or you will have an encounter with the God of Abraham. Because the scriptures are clear. Colossians 3 and 25. For whatsoever wrong a man doeth that wrong shall be returned unto him, for God is no respect of person. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, folks, that is it for me. I was hoping to tie this up today, but clearly that's not going to happen. I have a few more scriptures, but we will end this next week, God Spares Life, with part three to this teaching on prophets and prophetess of Baal. So until next week, God bless you.